We literally had a live therapy session today. No, seriously. I don't have no problem putting myself out there. Do you want me to respond to that for real, for real? <laughs> <laughs> the patterns that we can't break are tied to the pain we haven't addressed. I think that is why black men die quicker because we hold things in. Now, before we hop into today's show, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Now let's jump into the video. So Kobe, 61% of men and 51% of women report at least one traumatic event in their uh, lifetimes. Yeah. And I wanna start off by asking you this first question that I think is very, very important for today's, uh, for today's watchers and listeners. I didn't really understand what the word trauma meant. I'll be yeah. honest, until recently, right? Mm. Until my therapist was walking me through things and you call her Aunt Love and I call her Mother Love and she was even breaking it down. And I think a lot of people don't even understand what trauma is, so they really can't even say they've been through trauma. So from your expertise as a, a licensed trauma therapist, what exactly is trauma to the person watching right now who's heard the word but really doesn't understand it? Yes, I think the most simple definition of trauma is any past pain that affects how you show up presently and affects how you perceive the future. Right. So any past pain that mm -hmm. affects how you show up presently, affects how you orient yourself presently, and then also affects how you perceive the future. That is at oh, the core goodness. of trauma. And when you look at what the word trauma, what it translates to in Greek is a wound, right? Ooh, okay. It is a wound. And so wounds don't heal by themselves, right? Yeah. They have to heal with attention. They have to heal with action. They have to heal with intention. And so really what trauma is, is a psychological, emotional, spiritual wound that has been left unhealed and unattended and so affects how you show up in the present and show okay. how you see the future for yourself and for other people. So in your experience with this definition, that's a great definition, okay? Any past pain that, that, that affects how you show up in the present and or future, right? Yeah. Uh, let's break this down even more. Uh, can you give us like a prime example? Um, um, of what that can look like in the present day today. Yeah. Well, you know, a lot of what I see are people who have experienced really significant emotional trauma. What mm. does that look like? No one's hand was laid on another person. No weapons were used. They just grew up in households where they were told all the time, you're not going to be anything, that you're a piece of crap, that you'll never amount to anything. Right. So that is a emotional pain. And mm -hmm. let's remember that the part of the brain that metabolizes physical pain is the same part of the brain that metabolizes emotional pain. Mm. Right. And so there's a moment of pain that affects how they see themselves in the present, low self-esteem, self-deprecation, self-loathing, and then affects how they see the future. Well, I can't do that. I'll never be able to make that much money. I can't start a business. I can't learn how to budget, right? All of those things start to affect how they see themselves in the future and how they see themselves in the present, but it's all rooted and tethered to this past pain. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Not the rolling up the sleeves. Oh, man, I had to, had to roll them up for that one because I'm like, that's... this. Okay, let's me and you talk. Let's me and you talk. For sure. I'm 39 years old. Mm -hmm. If I come to you, you know, and I say, Kobe, I, I, I've been through a lot of my past yeah. and I'm still single. Yeah. As a trauma therapist, what would be some of the questions you would ask me? If I, I said, hey, I'm still single, I really don't know why. Yeah, I would first start with asking, like, how do you define a healthy relationship? I define a healthy relationship as we love each other and I pay all the bills and the wife doesn't have to pay all the bills why? and we both love God. Uh-huh. Why? Why is that your uh, definition of healthy? Because I remember sitting at the table and my mom was frustrated with her job mm -hmm. and she was emotional about her job mm -hmm. and my dad said, hey, just quit then. Just yeah. quit. 
come home, don't want you upset, don't want you upset and coming home upset um, and just start your own business, start your own daycare, do what you want to do, quit the job. And to me, yeah. I'm like, well, I saw my dad step up and say, listen, I got the house. You yeah. quit, you come home because you're emotional and a little frustrated um, and you're not happy at the job and we don't want that home. So yeah. you quit, start your own business. To me, that's just a, that's a healthy relationship. Mm. Do you want me to respond to that for real, for real? Kobe <laughs> <laughs> was like, hold up, wait. Kobe <laughs> was like, wait, do you really want me to do this right now on the show? <laughs> No, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm serious. Like, that's what I saw. I mean, I have four sets of parents, Uncle Bay. Yeah. So it's like, I saw, and go deeper, I yeah. saw my mom for a season be the breadwinner of our family. Yeah. And carry the weight. Yeah. And I also saw how heavy that was on her as a woman. Like, I, she never complained about it. So to this day, she doesn't complain about it. Yeah. Um, that's my biological mom because she yeah. did what she had to do as a parent. And then I saw my other mom she's not a step she's my other mother yeah um have the opportunity to kind of take that weight off of her and that is something that i wanted to adopt because yeah. i saw i saw that so it's like i i grew up seeing two different dynamics of a relationship and when i look at a healthy relationship yeah i sided with the side of my dad stepped up told his wife hey come home i got you yeah yeah, and so there are lots of ways that we could go for the sake of simplicity. I would invite you to ask yourself, where did you get the idea of what a healthy relationship looks like? That mm -hmm. answer is obvious, right? Mm -hmm. uh, you got that from what you saw and what you experienced. But not only did you get your idea of what a healthy relationship looks like based on the relationships that you were exposed to, you also got... A, you absorbed a value about what it means to be a husband based on how you saw your father be a husband, uh -huh. right? And I think one thing that's so important in trauma healing is there's not always a right and wrong. Uh -huh. It's it's really about gaining understanding of what what is before me and where have I gotten this from, right? Life is full of ups and downs, and when you're at your best, you feel unstoppable, ready to conquer anything that comes your way. However, there are times when life challenges can be overwhelming, making it difficult to be the best version of yourself. You see, that's where therapy can make a significant difference. By working with a licensed therapist, you can uncover the tools and insights needed to empower yourself and navigate life obstacles with confidence. If you're considering therapy, BetterHelp is an excellent choice. With this convenient, flexible, and affordable online platform, you can connect with a licensed therapist who understands your specific needs. Simply complete a brief questionnaire and you'll be matched with a professional tailored to your requirements. Plus, you can change your therapist at any time without any additional cost. Invest into your mental health invest into your mental well-being and take the first step towards a more fulfilling life. Right now, you can receive a 10% off your first month by visiting anthonyoneal.com forward slash therapy. Again, that is anthonyoneal.com forward slash therapy. Begin your journey to self-empowerment today. And together, let's get back to the show. So you saw your dad be a way that your mom metabolized her emotions, right? Mm -hmm. So for you, you have absor absorbed this value that is my job to be the source of emotional regulation for my partner, right? Mm -hmm. That can be healthy in certain situations and trusting relationships, but that's not always healthy, right? So it might be healthy for you to stand alongside someone as they're experiencing disappointment in their career, rather than to completely take away the source of disappointment, right? That's what God does in scripture, uh -huh, right? Uh -huh. Sometimes he heals and sometimes he lets you have that thorn in the side and he walks alongside you and says, my grace is sufficient, right? And so I think that it's powerful for us to see that we will repeat what we've seen and um, we will emulate what we've experienced. Mm. Mm. We will emulate what we've experienced. And so my job, 
as a therapist is to help people understand that developmentally, when you see something before you, especially as a teenager, um, you're going through a mind state and developmental stage where you have a foreclosed mindset, which means it's black and white, it's right or wrong, right? Uh Um, But there is a world in which it's right for you and wrong for someone else, right? That's good. And so having to remember, I absorbed these values when I was a teenager and when I did not necessarily have the cognitive capacity to really investigate what works and what doesn't. And so now as an adult, my job as a therapist is to help people reinvestigate values that they held dear to themselves at a young developmental age, because now we're in a different developmental stage. You know, you think about someone putting on a heavy coat in the winter, that's going to keep you nice and cold and and, nice and warm and protect you from the cold if you're in a blizzard. But when seasons change, the same thing that protected you could suffocate you. And that's a lot of what's happening with the values that we have is that might have worked for their relationship but what if there's a world where you get to be a present supportive providing husband and you are still married to a woman who doesn't like her job and what if the relief you bring is through your presence and not through removing her financial responsibility you know that's so good that's so good you see you see you see I don't have no problem putting myself out there you know what I'm saying because I, I think, <laughs> and you put yourself out there yeah you know what I'm saying because I think I think that's that's the first process of healing because I knew where you was gonna go with that because my therapist has already walked me through that. Uh, yeah. so, so I knew where you was going, but I wanted yeah. other men and other ladies to understand that what you said is there's it could be healthy, it could not be healthy. Mm-hmm. I think what you have to do is really align that because you said something that was so good and my therapist taught me that. She said, think about this. She brought the winter example, she brought the summer example, but then she yeah. also brought up the, the spring example. Mm-hmm. She said sometimes in, in, in when you're dealing with people in the morning, that jacket is needed, mm-hmm. but come the afternoon, it's too hot. It's got to come off. You got you got to take it off. So when you get with people, sometimes people get upset and oh man, they're they're night and day. Well, that's just like the season. You know that jacket needs you at from six a.m. to nine a.m. You need that jacket on so you yeah. won't get sick. But then from eleven to about four, you don't need that jacket. Mm-hmm. Now it's suffocating you. Now it's hurting you. Yep. And you really got to understand that. So I, I'm wondering from your experience, and I love this because I meet a lot of people who have experienced trauma mm-hmm. around finances and, yeah. and how they may come into um, um, a great opportunity. I met this one lady, uh, Kobe. Man, she literally told me she does not want to take the, um, she doesn't want to take the promotion because she says, I don't need that kind of money. <laughs> she said, I, I grew up to where I was only making $500 a month. I, I don't need $5,000 a month. And and people with $5,000 a month, it changes the money changes people and attitudes be shifting yeah. and, and people be getting all arrogant. You know, my God's going to just, he's been providing and, and that, 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 that. I was like, who hurt you? Mm-hmm. Like, like, like what happened that you feel as if you don't deserve and that you can't use and steward a pay raise, a promotion simply because of income. So I'm curious, um, I wanna ask this question because you you answered this a little bit, but what what are some practical ways someone can begin to one, identify they have experienced trauma and then how do we start healing? What's the first step to starting the healing process of trauma? Absolutely. So when I am helping people identify that they've experienced trauma, I usually ask like two sets of questions. The first question I ask is what is a pattern that you want to break that you should be able to break, but you just can't? Mm -hmm. What is something that like, I just want to stop over giving, but I can't do it. I want to stop, you know, being available for everyone. I just can't do it because Mm. the patterns that we can't break are tied to the pain we haven't addressed. (sighs) Right. The patterns are the band aid. The ba- patterns are the way that we cope with the negative emotions that come up from the pain of the past that is still living in our present. Um, and then another thing that I ask, you know, is if you could never engage in this pattern again, what emotion would you have to get acquainted with? That's so good. That's what would you oh, have to my start feeling. Oh man, man, I, I'm taking notes just so you know, because you know I, I'm, 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 I'm gonna be going back and talking to myself here a little bit. <laughs> yes. 
you know, I, I, I'm loving this. Do to get over trauma. Mm -hmm. Do we need to hire a trauma therapist in your opinion? I think that there is a level of trauma work that we can do ourselves. Right. Okay. And a lot of that has to do with two things, awareness and curiosity. Right. When okay. we get curious, because really the first three months of me doing trauma therapy with someone first three to five months is them building awareness mm -hmm. that like they're actually you're in pain, <laughs> you're struggling, you're hurting, like you're not living in reality. My husband says you're living with the ghosts. Mm. You'll be like, babe, I know you feel like I did this, but I need you to hear me. You're talking mm. to the ghost. You're not talking mm. to me. You're talking to the version of me or someone who existed at one point, but no longer is here. Right. Yeah. And so um, helping them develop awareness and get curious. Why do I do the things I do? Why do I hold on to the values that I hold on to? That's a lot of the reason why I wrote my book was I condensed my first three months of therapy. I put it in a book with faith principles to help people start to do the work themselves. Now, there is a biological and neurological reality to experiencing trauma. All of the experience we have are social, but then they're biologically encoded. And through epigenetics, they're encoded into our DNA and if we don't resolve it passed on to our offspring right uh -huh. and so I think a lot of people don't realize that we know that but we don't actually realize that how do I know that we already know this well when someone has a problem with alcohol we might say oh yeah you know his daddy was a drinker and you know his granddaddy was a drinker what we're talking about is epigenetics we're talking about yep. the fact that these traits these character traits when are when engaged in persistently can be passed down genetically um and in that case i think that yes you do need to hire a trauma therapist because if someone breaks trust with another person that person may have changed repented become a new person but your body has still memorized the fear of who they used to be right mm. so how do you shift the ways that your body naturally reacts to someone who used to be unsafe but is now unsafe that's where trauma therapy can come in y'all mentioned kobe in her book and the title of her book is called why am i like this how to break cycles heal from trauma and restore your faith um and yeah. that is why my team reached out to her uh, because i've been seeing her on some of my good friend shows and and i just seen her around and just killing it and I, I am very, very big on therapy. Yeah. And we are going to link her book in today's show notes uh, so you all can get a copy of that. Please get a copy of the book because I promise you it will bless you. I have not read it yet, I'm going to be honest, but I have ordered it and I will be reading it myself uh, because I really do believe that, especially within the black community, trauma has been passed down to us from slavery. Absolutely. And I just think that we in the black community have some healing to do. And, and a lot of us don't even know that we have some healing to do. Yeah. And I was, uh, Kobe, talking with um, a young man, actually several young men, and, and they were talking about, yeah, man, you know, I struggled. Um, I had to fight. And my kids are going to have to know what it feels like to struggle and fight. And I'm like, why do we need to pass down struggle? Well, why do we need to pass down fighting? Do, should our kids be aware of what they've come from? Yes. But do they need to feel it and experience it? Yeah. No. And so I, 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 and correct me if I'm wrong, Kobe, but I believe that we can pass down uh, trauma because we haven't been healed. And one of the main reasons why I am in therapy on every other week sitting out with my therapist yeah. is because I want to make sure, one, when I get married, I'm not bringing as much trauma and drama into my marriage. And two, I want to make sure that I'm healed and I'm not passing down this. So can we honestly pass down trauma? Yeah, we can pass down trauma for sure um, through behaviors, right? Through the ways yeah. that we treat people, but then yeah. also we can pass down biological dispositions, right? Like if a, a parent has a biological disposition to anger and rage and expressing that rage, we can pass that down, right? And we can even pass down like traits like forgiveness. There was a recent study that talked about how the prefrontal cortex of people who forgive easily is literally different than people who often hold grudges. So when we practice something, we learn through repetition. Let me say that. We learn through repetition and we unlearn through repetition. So just because you're trying something new and it doesn't work the first couple of times doesn't mean you should stop. 
right? And so when we practice forgiveness, when we practice generosity, when we practice betraying the limiting beliefs that come from our past trauma, we literally are changing the structure and the wiring of our brain and then either passing down a biological um, disadvantage or a biological advantage to our children. Yeah. <laughs> And, I, yeah. and I'm and I'm pausing because I'm like, and I'm gonna say this, and it, and it may rub some people wrong. Yeah. And I apologize for saying this up front, but we just gotta say it because we keep it real, we keep it relevant, we keep it relatable here at the table. But um, our parents have passed down trauma that they didn't, they don't even know that they passed down. For sure. You know, and why they think that. Which, I, let me say this, let me say this up front. My parents did an amazing job with the information that they had at the time. Yeah. I will never take that away from my parents. I never, ever, ever will. I am the man today because of 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 the fathers my fathers were in my life. And honestly, because of the prayers yeah. and the covering that my mothers had over me. I, I, will, I will forever be grateful. Yeah. But as I am evolving and learning and learning from people like yourself and like my therapist, some of the things that I am thinking and experiencing has, it came from my childhood days. It came from what my parents said, what my parents did and how they passed down. And I never recognized that that's technically not healthy, Anthony, you know? And, and as I'm learning at 39, you know, I'm like, dang, Anthony, some of the things that I have done that has honestly hurt people's feelings, yeah. done people wrong, wasn't intentional, but it was trauma that I, I just wasn't healed from. Yeah. And I didn't even really identify that that's not healthy. Yeah. And I'm reduplicating something that is not healthy. Yep. And and and, and y'all, uh, mm -hmm. y'all, I'm gonna ask you this: what what are we what are we duplicating that's not healthy? Yeah. And it's hurting other people. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think that sometimes people forget that our nature to multiply. Um, is something inherent and something that we cannot stop, but we can inform what is being multiplied. Wow. Right? Like, you are going to be fruitful and mar multiply regardless, but what are you multiplying? Ooh. And is it fruitful? Ooh. Are you multiplying trauma or are you multiplying fruit? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Oh, oh my gosh. Like you really have me sitting here like, dang, like what, what am I multiplying? Yeah. What am I multiplying that I, th that I thought was healthy, but honestly it's not. Yeah. What, what, what am I multiplying that is hurting more than helping? Yes. What am I multiplying that God is not really pleased with? And he's sitting up there saying, "Hey, hey, oh, you need to, you, you need to, you need, you need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I get it. You saw it over here. I get it, mm -hmm. but that's not. I'm not happy with that. Yeah. And 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 there's two there's two types of people, yeah. Kobe. It's it's the they don't know, mm -hmm. genuinely, mm -hmm. and who, and then it's the people who do know but don't care because that's what they're used to seeing. Uh, Oh, and I wanted, I wanted to speak into this when you said it before. So just because something can become adaptive doesn't mean we should pursue it, ah! right? So you going through trauma, by the grace of God, we can't erase what happened to you, but we can heal and take the adaptive traits that come from that traumatic experience, right? That's what it looks like in real time for all things to work together for your good, is that even when something bad happens to you, that you can take the bad and turn it into something that is good and an advantage for you. But that doesn't mean we should create the conditions of trauma to get that adaptive trait. Just because that adaptive trait came out of trauma doesn't mean it's the only way that trait can come to fruition. Come on. But you know where that comes from in the black community? What does the Bible say? He will take the bad, uh -huh. the evil, and uh -huh. turn it into good. And I think what people think is, well, if he did it there, then we can always do this and turn it back, rather than saying it doesn't have to be that way yeah. all the time. It doesn't. It doesn't. <sighs> it doesn't. 
you can learn long suffering and teach long suffering without abusing someone. You can teach patience without neglecting someone. My you can, God. You can, those traits can be developed without traumatizing someone. And then what that does is it transfers often into people's faith and they start to conceptualize that the only way that God will give them good things is to hurt them. Right. And that speaks back to that example you talked about. Right. This woman who clearly wants the resources to live a full life, but doesn't want it to come in a way that's good and easy because all good things have to come through trauma. All good mm. things have to come through suffering, through the anxiety of not knowing when it's going to come from the anxiety of not knowing where it's going to come. And so having to remind people, you can get good things from God a good way. He's not a God who's only going to cause you to suffer. Now he'll use the suffering. Now he'll use the abuse, but God is not searching for abuse to hand to you so that you can develop patience. And we oh. should not search oh. for abuse to develop positive traits. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <sighs> I think. And I'm trying to make sure I say my words, right? Yeah. Cause I'm on a, I'm on, I'm on a show with a licensed therapist. And, uh, a part of me thinks the reason why, the reason why some black people are not living the life they desire financially is because of past trauma passed down to them. Yes. And we have not healed and we have not taken the time to heal our minds from what we were taught. Yeah. And I get in trouble every time I say this, right? Um, while as a black man, I'll be honest, I'm speaking for me, I'm not speaking for Cobain, speaking for me. As a black man that is, as a black man, I don't feel like it is solely on the government to, to, to make me wealthy because of what happened to my ancestors. I think while they are fighting a fight to give us equal equal opportunities, I do believe that there's a part of me that is responsible to heal internally of what my ancestors have said. Not my ancestors, what what the world has said, heal so I can move forward um, and know that, hey, although I am this individual, although we did experience this, I'm not gonna look at everyone like that. And I am just as equal as them because the same God that made that person, that person, that same God made me and I have the same opportunities and I'm gonna make it happen. Like I feel as if we within the black community have to heal from the past internally while having some expectations for things to change legally. But while we're fighting that fight, while we're waiting for that to happen, what are we doing? One, to heal and two, to progress forward. Yeah. And if there's one thing that I think that we as a people need to heal from, it's the understanding of emotions. Come on. I have to tell people often, um, acknowledging the emotion is not the same as acquiescing to the urges of the emotion. Wow. And oftentimes we conflate the two. We think if I'm acknowledging the anger, it's now I'm acting out my rage. That's Come very on. different, right? And the distance between the two is self-control. And yeah. self-control is something that can only be developed through practice. Yeah. So you're not going to get it right all the time, right? But we have to learn how to acknowledge emotions and understand that emotions are a part of God's divine design. And that means that they have a purpose. God doesn't create anything without purpose. Emotions are the check engine light of the soul. They're meant to indicate a need, something that we are desiring, something that we're longing for. And a lot of us have shut off emotions and you don't get to have the need of the emotion met without expressing the emotion. So we're shutting down the emotion and then wondering why those needs aren't getting met. Well, you have to, you have to express the emotion to get the need met. So and good. I, I, that is like my one thing is just getting people to understand and feel emotions, right? Yeah. Because what we don't work out, we'll act out. <laughs> and so we're seeing a lot of people who uh, don't want to talk about emotions, don't want to address emotions, but just because you don't address something doesn't mean it's not affecting you. <sighs> but you know what though? That's... <laughs> This is not a, this is not a proven stat. This is me just 
You know what I'm saying? Just me giving my opinion. Yeah. If, 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 if my opinion is proven wrong, please correct me. You have every right to be like, nah, Anthony, that's wrong. Okay. Uh, you know, I have no problem with that because you're the expert. I'm not. I think that is why black men die quicker because oh. we hold things in. Yes. You know what I'm saying? She was like, wait, where are you going with this, A.O.? <laughs> yes. Yes. It's like we hold all of our stuff in because the world teaches men that, hey, we cannot be expressive. We cannot be vulnerable. Yeah. We need to hide all of our emotions. Yeah. So we're stressed internally. Yeah. We're crying eternally. Yeah. We're depressed eternally. We yeah. could be sitting at the dinner table with our spouses, with our kids, with yeah. our friends, and don't even know internally we are depressed, we are crying. Yep. We are going through trauma. We have emotions that we're compressing, but I got to pay the bills. I got to go to work. I got to yep. do this. I got to yep. do that. So I got to smile on the inside. Yep. And it's like, I think that is one of the reasons why we, we, we die is because earlier is yep. just simply because there are a lot of men are not in an environment to where they feel it is safe to express their emotions, like you said, so yep. we can address our emotions because the moment that we address it, the world attacks us as being soft or as yep. in not being a man. Yep. Uh -huh. And I refuse, Cobain, I'm going to let you talk. I want you to come in and give your expertise on that. But I refuse to be married to a woman that I cannot express my emotions to. That, that, that I cannot be like, hey, here's the trauma that I've experienced. Yeah. Here's the journey that I'm currently on with my therapist. Yeah. Um, and here's what you cannot bring into this situation yeah. because it brings up stuff from... X, Y, Z, and I'm trying to progress forward. Yeah. And, um, um, but when I say that sometimes, they'd be like, no, no. I'm like, why is it? Men men are not dying because we're just not eating healthy. That's not yeah. it. There, there's, there's more internally and deep that we're just not bringing out. And and yeah. that scares me as a man. Absolutely. And and it should. It should. Mm. I've, I've worked with people who've developed, you know, chronic illnesses because they've just suppressed it, right? There's a reason why there are studies that link keeping secrets to esophageal cancer. There's a reason, you know? And I think that we forget that emotions are expressed through our body, right? Ooh. Emotions are Ooh. not just like this thing up here. Emotions are the response to an external stimuli that causes our brain and our body to release specific hormones in our body. That's why when someone's angry, they feel it. You yeah. can literally do scans, and I have this in my book, there are scans of the human body based on the emotion that people are feeling. There's a reason why we say emotionally our heart is here, because literally your chest war radiates warmth when you feel a sense of love and affection for someone, right? When you are angry, the top half of your body, your head, your arms, your fists, literally there are scans that show that. And, you know, just because you're not expressing emotion doesn't mean your body is not metabolizing it. Mm -hmm. And the part of metabolism is it has to be processed, then it has to be released. Mm -hmm. So the metabolism isn't complete until unless it ends in a release. And oh black my men gosh. are getting the opportunity to release these emotions in a way um, where they feel safe and where they feel supported. And if they do, it's not in a consistent way. You know what? Kobe, we're going to bring you on like once a quarter. <laughs> Deal. I love we it. We're going we, we gonna, to, we gonna, I'm serious. I'm going to set this up with Michelle. I'm going to let you Michelle. I think we need to bring between you and Dr. Anita Phillips. We need to bring you along okay. so that, that way we can be answering people's questions. Because you just said something. Metabolism, one, it needs to be. You got to eat. You got. You got. Something mm -hmm. has to come in. Yeah. Once it's in, it needs to be processed. Yeah. Once it's processed, it needs to be released. Yep. And I think sometimes we really in life we can't control what we eat. Some well, I would say this: the majority, a lot of times, we can't control what we experience, sure. what what we see, what happens, right? Yeah. Um. Sometimes, like for an example. Uh, if you eat red meat, that takes longer to process in your body than yeah. it does with fish, right? Yeah. And yeah. so it's like sometimes we can't control how long it, it processes, but sometimes we can control how long our we, we process our emotions and release yeah. it. But here's the problem that I'm seeing. I don't think we've learned how to release yeah. those emotions. Yeah. I think we 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 process it. We we and sometimes we process it wrong. I I was talking to one of my friends, um, and, and I told her, say, hey, if we're gonna build a relationship, 
don't process it by yourself. Because yeah. while you're processing it, it may take you a long time because you don't have all the right information for me. Yeah. And so if you include me in the journey, if I say something that offends you, if I do something that offends you, while you're pro we I could possibly help you release that quicker yeah. if you help me process it. Yeah. And I think that's why we need therapists. That's yeah. why I need y'all to get this book uh, from Kobe, because I think the problem is we're processing too long. And when yeah. we're processing too long with the wrong information, mm. one, we don't want to release it. And two, we're processing the wrong things. Yeah. And then what we're doing is we're, we're just reduplicating that process and passing down that trauma mm. and that experience to our people. But I'm like, I think I'm going through something right now uh, within my circle of of family and friends, and and they haven't released mm. the trauma. They they have not released and, and just said, "Hey, this is how I'm feeling. This is what's going on," and walking that through. Mm. And I think that just hurts us long term. Mm. But you know what? I'm gonna challenge you with this. Sometimes we don't get to choose how quickly the release happens. Okay. There are times when we do have the choice of like, okay, it's time to let this go, right? And we know that we have the ability to let something go when we forget about it, think about it, and then try to hold on to it. That's right? good. But I think that we also have to remember, but sometimes the process does take a long time. And do we have the patience to keep living? Do mm. we have the patience to keep showing grace? as we're processing because yeah. healing really is a lifelong journey yeah and when people say like well why is it a lifelong journey because you never know how your past pain is going to intersect with something that's going to happen in the future you mm. have no clue you can't prepare for that right but you can resource yourself with an understanding of what happened to you what emotions it brought up what patterns show up in your life because of it and how you can process those emotions what that looks like for me is sometimes having to say the anger I'm feeling right now is an anger for someone else and it's not for you. So mm. let me let me have a second to process that and to think about that. And then I'll come back to this conversation because I don't want to give you anger that belongs to somebody else. Right. And that can only come from an awareness that that moment still makes me angry. And when we look back on our trauma, we're not supposed to feel nothing. Mm. Right. Because anger is emotion that indicates that a line has been crossed and that value has been devalued. So right? good. Yeah. And so you cannot shut off anger and hold on to self-worth and self-esteem. You can't. Right. Anger has to be present with self-worth and self-esteem. If you're married to someone and someone shoves her because you esteem her, you should get angry and it should be concerning if you're not right because your anger is directly correlated to the value you have for her yep. right and we see that even in scripture right that like yep. when people treat um god's people wrong when people treat look at david what? david knew what it was he said take my enemies out because i know i'm valuable <laughs> to you okay and so it's not about never being angry but it's about knowing who that anger is ascribed to and where that anger is coming from because sometimes it'll be easy for us to ascribe anger to people in our present when it belongs to the people of our past now mm. we can still feel it but we have to be careful about releasing it onto people who weren't the cause of the anger we're feeling even if it comes up in relationship with them Listen, listen, <laughs> you teaching, you are teach. We are, if y'all would like to see Kobe come on once a quarter and we just answer, we just answer questions. You know, maybe we send her like four or five questions and we just, we just throw it on the channel. I want you to comment that in the, uh, uh, in the YouTube comment sections on Instagram, wherever you're watching this at, let us know if you would love that. And maybe we just create some questions that we, that we honestly, uh, just send between her and maybe Dr. Anita and just throw it on a segment of the show or something like that. Because, yeah. uh, Kobe, I think one of the reasons why we're not wealthy, one of the reasons why people are not starting businesses and really experience, experiencing everything God has for them is because we're not healing. Yeah. It's because we're not taking the time to process trauma, past trauma, to process our mental uh, thoughts and how we process and look at things. Yeah. And that's why I've been very, very big on this part of of therapy, partnering with different therapy companies to to really make sure that we are helping people heal. Yeah. Um, if if 
are, are I don't know this. I don't, I don't know this about you. I, I, I should have asked you before the show, rather than ask you live on the show. Yeah. Do you accept new clients? Do you have a firm? Yes. If people want to connect with a trauma therapist, um, can they reach out to you? Yes, absolutely. So I have a practice here in South Charlotte okay. it's called the Healing Circle Therapy and Wellness Center. It is me and I have another clinician, Maria. She provides services uh, in English and in Spanish. And so okay. we are taking clients if you want to come see us. We don't have a ton of spots, but we do have a few. So you can for sure come and see us. We also do workshops, intensives, retreats. I have a membership community called the Inner Circle as well. My just hope and goal is to dispense the information as much as consistently to as many people as possible. And so um, it's my passion. It's my love. I love doing it. I love talking about it. And um, we would be honored to walk alongside anybody, any organization, church person as they step into yeah. healing. You're amazing. I wish we I wish we had a much longer show, but we, we know our people like that quick 30, 32 minute show. So we're, we're yeah. really trying to hit to that. We're already at 40 minutes. Um, uh, so we're already over, but I, I genuinely want to say thank you. Like, thank you. thank you for one, accepting your calling and your assignment. I love how you can be real in the practice, practical space. Yeah. And then you can bring in scripture just to put that icing on the cake. Like, hey, listen, yeah. this is why this is important because this is what the Bible says. And you're not leading 90% with Bible and 10% with practical. It's like, hey, listen, no, practically science, this is what you're experiencing, but let me put God on top of that. And here's an example of what's going on. And I just yeah. think us in the Christian Christian community, we need that because yeah. um, while I, I, I believe that, that the, there is power in prayer, mm -hmm. uh, but there's also power in therapy. Yes. <laughs> so... Um, so when you can find a Christian therapist who may not l practice and lead with the, the Bible 100%, yeah. I would be scared to see a therapist to where everything 100% was biblical. I would be scared. And that would be unethical. And yeah, you know, <laughs> I, I tell people all the time, I serve clients of all backgrounds. Yeah. And what's been so interesting is even through my expression of like how this integrates with faith, I've kind of accrued a lot of Muslim clients who are like, you know, honestly, I, I know you're talking about Jesus and, you know, your faith, but this kind of applies to me too. Wow. And the truth is a lot of people want to know that um, in your own life that you're beholden to something other than other than yourself mm. um and what's funny is the christian clients that come in they're more intrigued with the facts with the science right yes. because they have that they have a resource they have a place a church a community where they can get that resource but they're trying to see how does god's word practically tangibly scientifically live out in my experiences yeah and so that's always like my favorite thing to do i only integrate faith principles if the client um consents to it or asks for it um, and I only do it to the extent that the client asks for it, you know, yeah. and it really is about healing the heart, mind, body, and soul, uh, regardless of what anyone believes. But if they believe in God, I definitely got a, a couple sprinkles for them. <laughs> hey, yo, when you be, when you drop those sprinkles, boy, they, they like, like hail. It's like, it's like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like, come on, Cobain, come on, you know? Oh, and I love that about you. But yo, we appreciate you. We value you. you. Um, Thank you. Uh, you guys, we're going to drop all of her information in today's show notes. You all, please go check it out. Um, go get her book for sure. Uh, because I, I genuinely, genuinely do believe that therapy within specifically the black community and minority community, we need that. We need the we trusted it. voice. Yeah, yeah, we deserve it. Um, and, you know, here, I'm going to say this and we're going to close out. We got to stop saying I can't afford it. When I hear people say, I can't afford to take care of my mind, but I look down and you have your shoes on, when I look at your purse, respectfully, Kobe hair looks amazing, but when I look at y'all's hair, you know what I'm saying? Like, y'all yeah. can afford it. It's it's not a priority. Yeah. And, because it's, and because your mind is at the bottom of your priority, mm -hmm. that's why you're going through the hell you're going through, because mm -hmm. we see what's important to you. And so I'm just gonna leave it right there. So we're gonna we're gonna drop her information. We're gonna put some other um, um, therapy outlets as well in um, in today's show notes. We we do partner with BetterHelp, so we'll put their, them in there. Um, so 
you guys, I don't want to hear that you can't afford it. I don't want to hear that you, you know, you don't need it. I don't, everything's good in my life. You know what? Everything is going good in my life too, but I want to make sure everything goes good. And if, and when, not, and if X that out, rewind, uh, when things go wrong, I want to be in a healthy place mentally that I know how to respond to it. And if I don't know how to respond to it, I have someone I can go to, to help me respond to it the correct way. That's a wise man. That's a wise woman. Yeah. And daggone it, don't tell me you can't afford it when your car note is seven hundred to a thousand dollars. Man, get that. Uh, let me let me be quiet. We got <laughs> Kobe. Let me be quiet. Yes, let me add one thing to what you said. You cannot yeah. fireproof your house while the house is on fire. And a lot of us are waiting for the house to be on fire to fireproof the house, and by that point, it's too late. You fireproof the house when no, when no there's no fire, when nothing's gone wrong. Right. So when the fire comes, it's already resistant to the flames. And so if nothing's going wrong, it's the perfect time for you to prepare yourself for when something will. You know, Kobe, I'm a preacher, man. When you say stuff like that, it makes me want to come back and give another example, but I'm going to leave it right there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a preacher at heart. She had me think like, oh, she's right, boy. Let me let me give another example. Let me close this thing out. <laughs> nah, we're gonna end it right now. Yeah. You can't fireproof your house. You cannot fireproof your house yeah. if it's already on fire. Yeah. And I think honestly, that's when we wanna we, that's when we want the fireproof. Mm -hmm. That's when we want to do it, when it's already on fire. Yep. And uh think about all the work, like you said, like dang. If it's already on fire, first we need to get the fire out. Yep. We need to assess the damage. Yep. Then we need to figure out, okay, how do we fix it? Then we gotta start the refixing process. Yep. Rather than in the beginning, we just could have put some fireproof up. Yep. Wow. Yep. Kobe, you all right with me. You are all right with me. <laughs> Yo, we'll drop our uh, check out our information. We're gonna drop it in today's show notes and uh, we'll see you on the next show. Peace out.